Till now we have seen the processing algorithm, the scheduling algorithms with the processes where bus time is given and by bus time they mean to say only CPU time. And now we shall see the examples where bus time will include one is CPU time as well as IO time. So a process can spend some time in the uh, you know at uh, CPU and then it can spend some time in the IO devices also. If that is the case, watch it. Uh, so a process can have you know three types of times i mean two types of times one is burst time during which it requires the cpu to finish and other is io time which during which it requires io devices therefore from cpu it will get out to the io devices and it will spend some time there and again it will come back right and then finally burst time now uh, we want to schedule this uh, processes in such a way that see this and one more thing this order has to be in the same way which means a process will be in the cpu for three units and then IO for 2 units and then CPU for 2 units, right? And um, the pro algorithm we are following is shortest remaining time first. So what is the shortest remaining time first? We are going to see the one which is having the least uh, burst time and schedule it first. And, so, and later if any, any process arrives with least burst time, we will schedule it you know, by preempting the first one, the earlier one, right? The present one. Now. In this, you need not count IO burst time at all. Without counting it, you can count these two as burst times, right? Therefore, the burst time of process P1 is 5, process P2 is 3, and process P3 is 3, and process P4 is 3, right? That is the burst times. 5, 3, 3, 3, right? And now, which one is the least one? So, let's let's draw the Gantt chart and you will understand it. Okay, with this example, you will understand it. Instead of explaining it uh, before, I will just take the example and make it clear. Now at time t equal to 0, what is the pro what are the process that arrived? P1 and P2, these are the two process which arrived at time t equal to 0, right? At this time, we are going to schedule anything. But then uh, you, we are going to pick the one with the least bus time, right? So P2 is the one with the least bus time out of these two. It is having 5 and it is having 3. See, it is having a bus time of 5 and it is having a bus time of 3. It is having a bus time of 3 and it is having a bus time of 3. Only CPU bus times, right? Fine. Therefore, let me schedule uh, P2 first. Yes, P2 is scheduled, right? And how long should it uh, run until I get any other process which is having a lower burst time, right? But then, uh, even if you run it till two units, if I run it till two units, right? Even if I run it for one unit, let's say you have run it, you didn't run it for two units, you had run it for one unit. Even if you run it for one unit, then also what happens is uh, the processing time, the burst time requirement of this process will fall to two, and by that time the next process, uh, no no process is available. Therefore, uh, you know nothing changes. So I could even go ahead and run it till two, and at this time one more process got available, and its total requirement is three, and we have already finished two time, and it requires only one more unit, right? But the problem is you cannot run it further. You cannot run this one unit unless you finish the four units of this, uh, you know, uh, CPU that I work. Therefore, at this point, process P2 will go for I O. Which one? Process P2, right? So how long will it go for I O? For four units. Therefore, for four units, you should not consider P2 for scheduling again. It is simple like this. Uh, initially it is in uh, you know ready queue and then it went to the running and from running instead of coming back to ready it is now in block state right waiting for the IO so how long will it be there for four units therefore for this four units you should not consider you should not pick it for running because it is not present in the ready now time is 2 now by this time 2 let's see what are the process which are available P1 is available and P3 is available, right? And out of these two, which one is having least bus time? P3 is having least bus time. Therefore, you, can, you could schedule P2, P3, isn't it? Now, I am scheduling P3 and it is saying that it can run for one unit and then it has to go for IO. Therefore, at this point, I will run it for one unit and again at this point, it is going for IO. Which one? P3 is going for IO, right? How long will it go for IO? If you watch it, the time time required by P3 uh, for IO is 3 units, right? Now, from 2 it requires 4 units and from 1 it requires 3 units. Therefore, 2 plus 4 is 6 and 1 plus uh, 3 is uh, 
uh, 4 right let's see let's see that later but then anyway right now this p2 and p3 both are in both are in block state where when time equal to sorry when time equal to 3 when time equal to 3 both p2 and p3 are in block state isn't it and now uh, which one what is the next process that we have to schedule so time equal to 3 now nothing is available only 1 2 3 are available out of which 2 and 3 are already you know they are at now uh, in the block state so only process which is available is p1 uh, out of other out of no choice i am going to schedule p1 now i have only one remaining choice p1 and i have no other choice i have to run it till the next one is available right so i'll run it till the next one is available which is nothing but 5 right and now after running it till 5 then the next process 5 is available right okay at this point just analyze it what has happened now at this point 5 i have run it for two units which means its requirement is 3 and a new process has added whose requirement is also 3 right therefore both the requirements of the process are 3 you could go ahead and run it for one more unit <coughs> so i am running p1 for one more unit which means till 6 so p1 is has now run for uh, totally 3 units 3 to 6 is 3 units and at this point p1 has to go for io so let's see what has happened to p2 see p2 got uh, p2 has gone for io at time t equal to 2 and now time t equal to 6 has happened so at this point the uh, p2 has finished this io and similarly p3 has you no know, gone for io at time t equal to 3 and now it has uh, taken 3 units which means at time t equal to 6 even p3 is also finished done with its io but then if you look at p1 p1 has just gone for io and it will require 2 more units isn't it so now p1 is not available but suddenly p2 and p3 are available p2 is available p3 is available and then p4 is also available because time is now 6 o'clock 6 uh, 6 units right and then p1 is only the one which is in the blocking state so you don't consider p1 and you just see what are the remaining ones and among them which one to schedule just watch it p2 has already finished two units right so p2 has already finished two units it, it requires only one unit and p3 p3 has finished how many one unit therefore p3 finished one unit and it requires two units more and then p5 p5 has not finished anything it requires three units more right so among p3 p4 and uh, p2 p3 and p4 they are in the ready queue which one are you going to schedule next obviously the choice is p2 because it is having the shortest you know, remaining time so i'm going to schedule p2 here p2 here and it will run for only one unit which means till seven and it will be over right therefore p2 is over at this point fine and now p2 is not there in the ready queue it is over it, it has gone to the termination and now i have p3 and p4 what happened to p1 here see this how long does p1 want to do the io it wants to do it for two units right which means if it started at 6 it will not be over till 8 so p1 is not at available now i have to make a choice between p3 and p4 just watch it p3 and p4 which one is having lower burst time to p3 therefore i am going to schedule p3 until what time until the next process becomes available right so what is the next process that becomes available at this point if i run till 8 right at this point p1 will also become available why p1 has gone for io only for two units and it started at 6 by 8 it must be available in the ready queue therefore now p1 is available and now uh, we have run this p3 for one unit therefore remaining time for p3 is one and now the total number of total process available is p1 p3 and p4 now among p1 p3 and p4 the requirements are like this p1 requires three units isn't it why because p1 has run only for two units uh, three units i think p1 requires only two units right see this here p1 has run for two units and then one more unit therefore p1 requires only two units fine now watch it among this p1 p3 and p4 p1 p3 and p4 right which one is having the lower time p1 p3 and p4 it is p3 therefore you have to again schedule p3 itself which means p3 will keep running for one more unit which is 9 right and at this point p1 is over right p1 completed 
then what are the two process remaining one process remaining is uh, p1 and other process remaining is p4 and among these two process which one do you want to schedule p1 requires only two units therefore p1 is obviously the candidate now p1 will be scheduled for how much two two units of time therefore it is going to run till 11 and it is going to be completed and finally we are going to schedule the p4 till now p4 never got scheduled right so finally p4 will get the chance to run therefore p4 can run completely and how can it run is see this p4 is scheduled at what time hmm, at uh, where yeah p4 needs two units of time burst time therefore till 13 it can run and after that in what happens is it will go for io therefore there is no no process currently to run for the next two units there is no process to run which means this complete two units of time 13 to 15 cpu is completely idle because all the process are over only one process is remaining which is nothing but this uh, p4 and p4 is also going for io therefore cpu has no process to run so it is going to be idle at this point and finally it requires one unit of time therefore i am going to run it and finish it at 16 okay observe this it is somewhat difficult to understand such a question has never been asked in gate and i don't know if they are going to ask it but anyway if you don't if you didn't understand it you could leave it but then uh, you know it is better that you know it maybe you could if you watch it for two three times you'll understand it see i'm not doing anything simple uh, i'm just using the parameters and then uh, uh, it is ordinary like just like shortest remaining time first but i have to keep track of when is the process going for io and when is it going to come back therefore you have to move the process between block state and the ready state and the running state earlier it was just moving them between the ready state and running state it was easy but now we have to keep track of three states that is why it might look difficult so um, maybe okay i'll, I'll solve more examples uh, with that you'll be able to understand it but then you practice this until you can't get it wrong okay uh, you practice it three four times it must be easy watch it three four times and then practice it three four times it will be easy okay hmm. so finally p4 got over. so finally p4 got over at 16 right so interesting questions about it will be what are the um this uh, what can i say completion times so asking about turnaround time and then waiting time is going to be a bit tricky and uh, somewhat difficult so let's talk only about the completion time so already we have we have done a complex computation here so let's talk about completion time what is the completion time for p1 p1 got completed at 11 and what about p2 p2 got completed at 7 and p3 got completed at 9 and p4 got completed at uh, 16 these are the completion times right and if you are looking at how to find out the turnaround time okay turnaround time is fine completion time minus uh, you know arrival time so turnaround time for the first one is 11 for the second one is 7 for the third one is 7 and for this one is uh, hmm, i think 11 right turnaround time is fine then what about the waiting time it is tricky in the sense waiting time previously was turnaround time and burst time right but now the burst time is uh, you know a combination of two burst times not just a single burst time so how to find out the waiting time is mm, you have to take from 11 a sum of these two burst times which means 11 minus 5 are you understanding it this is burst time and this is burst time therefore you have to de decrease the uh, you have to you know reduce these two reduce these two from this 11 then 11 minus 5 is 6 and 7 minus 3 is 4 and 7 minus 3 is 4 and 11 minus 3 is uh, 7 8 right so uh, if you under if you are understanding this i am not going to include this one in the computation of in the subtraction because uh, this time is also actually waiting time so therefore this one has also also reflect there that is why I am just deleting if you are if you are observing it that's why I was just uh, trying to delete only the time spent at the CPU and everything else is waiting time either it is waiting for IO or it is waiting in the ready queue everything is, is combinedly called as waiting time right and you can find out average turnaround time and average waiting time it is a bit difficult question I don't think that they'll ask it but uh, still it is better that you know it hmm? fine